What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at the color chooser for TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the color chooser for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my courses and all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the color chooser for TTK Bootstrap. And that's this guy right here. You can see, ooh, it's very neat looking. And if you can click on this, boom, it'll pick a color, give you all the data. We can click okay. And now we're gonna change our color to that color. Let's change it to blue, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do with the color that you choose. That's kind of irrelevant, but I'll show you how to get the actual information. You can see the RGB value and the hex code and all that good stuff. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it cc.py, short for color chooser, I guess, .py. And it's our basic Kinter starter code that we've been using. We've been imported TTK Bootstrap as TB. We pip installed that many videos ago, and we're using the superhero theme. So let's come down here, and I'm just going to create a quick button real quick. I'm going to call it my underscore button, and it's going to be a tb.button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, click me, <laughs> right? Uh, let's give it a boot style of danger to make it red just for fun. And let's give it a command of uh, CC, short for color chooser, I guess, right? And we don't have this function yet. We'll create it in just a second. So let's my underscore button dot pack this guy, put it on the screen. And let's give this a pad Y of like 40 to really push it down the screen. Now underneath this, I want a label. So I'm going to call this my underscore label just so that I can show you the output of the color chooser, what it returns. So for now, let's just create this as a TB dot label, put it in root and give it a text of nothing for now. And actually let's make this font bigger so it's easier to read. So I'm gonna make this Helvetica and like a size 18. So, okay, let's go my underscore label, dot pack this guy and give it a pad Y like 10, push it down screen a little bit. So, okay, now we've got all this set up. Let's define our CC function, color chooser and call it anything you want. I'm just calling it CC. So in order to use the color chooser, first we have to actually import it up here at the top of the screen. So Let's go from TTK bootstrap dot dialogues, because technically this is a dialogue box. It's a little box that pops up, right? And then dot color chooser. We want to import color chooser dialog. And you'll notice the capitalization, the C is capitalized, this C is capitalized, and this D is capitalized. So color chooser dialog. And now that will allow us to use it. Now it's kind of weird since we're kind of importing everything from TTK bootstrap, why do we have to import these dialogues separately? I don't know, you just have to, right? <laughs> That's how that works. And so let's create a color chooser. So I'm gonna call it my underscore color, call it anything you want. And this is gonna be a color chooser dialogue, right? Now, in order to show this onto the screen, have it pop up, we call my underscore color dot show, right? And that will show it. So strictly speaking, this will work, but it won't really do anything after, you know, we run it. So let's save it and run it just to make sure this is working. Head back over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python cc.py. When we do, we get this thing. Oh, it says message box. We're gonna have to change the title. We could click this. Hey, it pops up. That's great. But if we click on one of these colors and click OK, nothing happens. It's not actually returning anything. So how do we get it to actually return something? Well, first, let's come up here and change this to color chooser for the title. <laughs> Right. And let's come down here and to capture what it returns, we can create a variable or we could just call a function. So let me comment this, create color chooser and then show color chooser. And then here, let's say return color chooser info. All right. So how do we do that? Well, let's just create a variable, call it colors, and we're going to set this equal to my underscore color which is our color chooser, what we defined right here, and then dot result. Now this will return three things and I'll show you what those three things are in just a second. But for now, let's output to the label. So remember we have this label called my underscore label. 
So let's dot config this guy and set the text equal to colors, whatever is returned here, right? So all right, let's go ahead and save this and run, see what we got here. So we click this and let's pick a nice screen. Now you'll notice it returns hue, saturation, and luminosity, HSL. It also returns red, green, blue, RGB, right? You've probably heard of RGB in color things in the past. That stands for red, green, blue. It also returns the hex code. Now this hex code is useful. This is really what you want, the hex code. Because anytime you're using colors, you want the hex code, right? If you want to change a color, use the hex code. I mean, you could use these things too, but they're not commonly used for that. But just for now, let's just click OK and see what it returns. And you'll notice it returns a string of numbers. Now, that's not that useful. Let's come up here and pick the most top rightest color. And that's hue of 0, 150, red of 255, green of 0, 0 and uh, this hex color code. So now when we click this, you can see it returns these three things. And if we run this again, and click on this again, and you can see the RGB is the first one. So 255, zero and zero. That's this column right here, 255, zero and zero. Then we have HSL, zero, 150, zero, 150. And finally, we have the hex color code, FF000, FF000. So, that's cool, but how do we get each of these individual things? It's returning three of them. How do we get each individual one? Well, super easy. There's a little function you can call, but instead of calling colors, you can call the thing you want. So say, for instance, docs dot hex. So here, let's go uh, dot hex, dot HSL, and dot RGB. So here, if we just want the dot hex, we can do that, save this, run it. Here, let's click, click the red again. And boom, it's just returning that hex, right? So if we wanted the RGB, instead of dot hex, we would call dot RGB, right? So if we save this and run it, I know, very exciting. <laughs> but if we click this, pick this color again, it's just returning to 255, zero and zero. Same for HSL, we could just go, you know, HSL, uh, and that will return the HSL. So I like the hex, you're almost always gonna use the hex. So that's what we want to return now. Let's change the background color of our app to chosen color, right? So let's just be goofy and play around with this. We could just root.configure and set the background to, you know, whatever we want. So colors.hex, whatever we're returning here. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. This is kind of a goofy example of why you might want to use this, but I don't know, you could do it like this. And let's change this to this pink. Whoa, there we go. Our background is now pink. We could do orange. Now it's orange. We could do blue. And you could do this for anything, right? Any widget, you could change the color. So if you wanted to change the color of your button, you'd do the same thing, right? Just configure your button, set the background color to, you know, that hex color code right there. And that's all there is to it. So kind of a goofy example, but, you know, I don't know. There's lots of different things you would use this for. And I can't go over all of those examples. There's thousands of them. So it's just one little simple example on how to use it. The main thing you really want is just to understand, to get the color code out of here, you're going to call your colors.hex. Now we went colors.hex. You could just as easily, instead of creating this variable right here, you could just go, you know, uh, let's see, let's come in here and go mycolors.result.hex. Right? If you wanted to just string along an object oriented sort of thing with this, which is our color chooser, right? We called it my color and it returns a result and that result can be a hex or an HSL or an RGB, right? So really either way that works, but I find it cleaner and easier just to create a variable right here, add this in here and then just call colors.hex to get the hex code. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're the other thing about membership in tkinter.com, it's a great website full of tons of courses. You can get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.